Hi, welcome back. We're now in the section number two, protocol overview. This is a pretty good section if you want to understand how TLS 1.3 works. Uh, usually, actually, if you only want to get a kind of a shallow understanding of how things work, you can only watch this video or read this uh, section, this protocol overview, and you're pretty much uh, good to go. Of course, all the other sections are interesting and I encourage you to, to watch the, the future videos I'll be posting for these sections as well. Uh, but this video is, is going to give you a very good overview of the protocol. So first, I will see that there is a diagram and this diagram kind of represents all the possible handshakes that you can do uh, in TLS 1.3. There are three of them. The first one is your typical ephemeral key exchange, uh, either a finite field defilement or an elliptic curve defilement uh, over different groups that are defined here or different curves. And, and, and since it's ephemeral, you get all this uh, forward secrecy property where uh, if the, the signing keys of the server gets compromised at any point in time, you cannot decrypt any of these sessions because they used uh, ephemeral keys. So keys that you just uh, throw after, be, after uh, uh, one use keys. If you don't uh, want to do that because either you have a pre-share key, PSK, something that you exchanged uh, out of bands in a different channel, uh, for example, in real life or the phone, wh whatever, uh, and, and you want to use that to do, the key, to do the key exchange, you can use that. This PSK can also be used, so this, this pre-shared key can also be used if you want to do session resumption, uh, which is a thing that is, is used uh, a lot in, in previous versions of TLS. Uh, and, and if you remember, you have um, all these session IDs or session tickets and stuff like that, uh, but here it's only uh, all, everything was, was removed and everything is now a PSK, pre-shared key, uh, and that's, uh, that's how it works. And we'll see about that uh, later, later in this video. Uh, but if you use PSK, uh, you, you kind of dismiss forward secrecy, meaning that if someone steals that PSK at some point in time, they will be able to decrypt that session uh, messages. So you might want to do PSK in addition with uh, an ephemeral key exchange, and that will be the third key exchange that, that we'll see. Um, all right, so let, let's look at the diagram and, and kind of what it means to have a TLS 1.3 key exchange. And we can see that we have different uh, messages sent by the client or the server, right? And these different messages are uh, categorized uh, differently. Uh, some of them are key exchange messages, some of them are server parameters, and finally, uh, some of them are authentication messages. We'll see that we also have post handshake messages, which are actually handshake messages, but happens after the handshake was done. Uh, so here, and, and that's why I, I categorize them as post handshake messages, but they're, they're under the handshake uh, messages and we'll see about them later. Uh, we also see that uh, we have a client hello, so very typical of TLS, that there's always a client hello. And then the server answers with server hello and a bunch of messages. And then in the next response from the clients, we have some messages and some application data. And what happens, uh, what, what we call uh, the, this thing is called a one round trip time or one RTT uh, key exchange, meaning that we have one round trip, the client sends something, the server answers, and that's it. And after that, the client can send some messages and the application data um, after that, key, that, after that one round trip. So in TLS 1.2, you have what we call two round trips. You need two round trips, full round trips of messages between the client and the server before the client can start sending application data messages. So application data being the, the data uh, that the application wants to send. Um, and this, this, this magic is, is pretty much done thanks to these first two messages that are, as you notice, called uh, the key exchange messages and that contain some extensions here, including a key share extension. And this is very important in TLS 1.3. This is why we have this, uh, this one round trip um, uh, kind of key exchange, which is very fast. It's because the client will uh, kind of try and guess what the server supports, what, what groups for uh, defilement or, or curves for elliptic curve defilement the server supports and send one public key or several public keys uh, to try and do a key exchange. And if it works, the server replies with the same extension containing the server's public key uh, with one of the public, key, the group uh, that the client used. And if 
they, they can do a key exchange like that and, and then they can go on uh, with the handshake. So, so the key exchange is super, super quick. And as you can see, everything after the key exchange is encrypted. You can see that because it has a lock, but also because messages are either using curly braces or uh, uh, square brackets. And this is pretty new also in TLS 1.3. Some of the handshake messages, actually most of the handshake messages are encrypted uh, and that didn't exist in previous versions of TLS. All right, uh, very quickly, what are these messages? So we saw the client hello and the server hello that to the, the normal key exchange and we'll see a bit uh, later that we have the PSK stuff happening there as well. These are extensions that are sent in the clear and so after the key exchange, the server can also send extensions encrypted. And we'll see uh, later in, in the section, the re relevant section, what these extensions are. And this message is mandatory, meaning that even if the server doesn't want to send encrypted extensions, it still has to send an empty uh, encrypted extension. After that, the server can request the client to authenticate and to send a certificate later on with a certificate request message. This is optional, as you can see with the star here or the, the dashed lines uh, here. Uh, all right, and then the server sends a certificate. Um, this is uh, the certificate, uh, X509 certificates containing the signing public keys of the server. Um, and if you don't really want to use X509, it's, it's, it's quite complicated. Uh, you, you also can use plain public keys and, and these plain public keys will be contained in that certificate message as well. It's up to you. Uh, after that, if you send a certificate, you need to send a certificate verify uh, containing a signature of the whole transcript with your signing keys that are contained in the certificate. These two messages are optional. Uh, this is because if you're doing a PSK, as I said, as I said before, uh, you don't uh, need to... Um, authenticate the, the, the server and you can skip these messages. After that, you have to send a finish message. This is uh, very like the, uh, very similar to the previous versions of TLS. Uh, and this finish message is just an edge mark of the whole transcripts. And it also advertises to the other peer that you're done with the handshake. And as you can see here, and this is quite new with TLS 1.3 as well, the server right after it's finished, so during the first round trip, right, can send application data right after all of its handshake messages. So the, maybe the server wants to send some data to the client before the client can even send data to the server, uh, and it's possible in TLS 1.3. Uh, and we're done with the first round trip. Now we go to the, back to the client. The client can send a certificate if it was requested to send a certificate. If it sends a certificate, it will have to be followed by a certificate verify. Anyway, if we send these messages or if we don't send them, we need to send a finish message to mark the end of the handshake for the client. And after that, we change key. As you can see, the key is different here. Uh, and we can uh, now communicate with the application data, right? The, the real data that the application on the upper layer wants to communicate. So this is pretty much the, the overview of all the possible messages and, and kind of what happens uh, in general in the key exchange in TLS 1.3. Now, I said that the key exchange magic happens in the first two messages because the client can predict what uh, groups, uh, development groups or uh, curves uh, the server supports, but that doesn't always go very, very well. And we're gonna see that in incorrect DHE share what happens if uh, the key share extension doesn't contain public keys that um, use algorithms that the server support? Well, the server can send a hello retry request containing a key share extension, which will not contain a public key, but a set of algorithms that the server support. And now we can try again as the client hello. And uh, this time uh, we'll, we'll have this key share extension containing one public key which we'll choose uh, from uh, this key share extension. Uh, and so this time we're sure that the server supports that group or that curve, uh, and we have no problem containing, co continuing the handshake. And, and from there, uh, you know, you just continue the handshake and you do a normal handshake. 
if the, the server sends you a key share containing uh, no groups that you support as the client, well, you're pretty much screwed and you cannot really go on and, and you, you just cannot connect to that server. And at this point, you should pretty much um, change the TLS implementation you're using to try and support more uh, options or, or you know, you just give up and you don't connect to that server. Um, I said that you continue with the handshake after receiving that hello retry request, like nothing happened. Uh, this is not quite true. When you uh, authenticate the, the whole transcript in that certificate verify or the finished or the client certificate verify, it will also contain that first client hello and that hello retry request. So you have to keep that in memory uh, when, when this happens. And also, of course, it's not going to be very efficient because you're going to waste one round trip uh, kind of figuring out what the server uh, supports. All right, let's jump to the next section. And this one will see how PSK work. Uh, for this in the diagram, we have uh, kind of a typical key exchange that would happen in previous versions of TLS. Uh, everything happens normally. And at the end of the key exchange, we have a post handshake uh, message, which is really a handshake message called new session ticket that the server sends us. And these can contain uh, either a session ID, which is tied to a, a secret key on the server side, or it can contain uh, an encrypted key that uh, you can give it, give back to the server later and the server can decrypt it. And this way it doesn't have to store anything on its side. Uh, it's what we call stateless session resumption. But as I said previously, if you if you can use PSK not for a session resumption, but just for a, a pre-shared key, key exchange, and you can skip this part and just obtain this PSK uh, from somewhere. And what happens when you do a PSK key exchange? Well, you uh, have this extension called pre-shared key, which includes uh, you know, your, your session ID or whatever. Uh, this is up to you or you're, you're dealing with uh, this problem. And the server will include the, the key share, uh, the, the pre-shared key extension as well to tell you that it accepts uh, the PSK key exchange. And afterwards, uh, you, the server doesn't send any certificates because uh, we don't care about authenticating the server when we do a PSK key exchange. Now, uh, as I said, uh, you lose forward secrecy when you do a PSK like that. So in your, your PSK key exchange modes extension, you can advertise to the server that you support uh, something more, that you, you support um, PSK with a nephermal key exchange in addition. So, so you can advertise what mods you, you support in this extension. And, and you can very well support both type of key exchange, a, P, a normal PSK, PSK only, or a PSK with ephemeral, and then the server can, can pick what it wants. Here you can send a key share is, uh, in two situations. In the situation when you want to do PSK plus an ephemeral key exchange, you need to send a key share, and the server will reply with the key share as well but you also want to send that in case the server doesn't recognize or reject your pre-shared key and you want to fall back on a normal key exchange. And so the server can answer without the pre-shared key extension and just the key share. And we have this normal key exchange that would happen uh, as we've seen previously. But besides that, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just use your pre-shared key and then there's some crypto happening that, and we'll see more about that in the cryptographic computation section. Uh, and then you go on with the handshake. All right, the last section is uh, the novelty of TLS 1.13. It's called uh, zero RTT data for zero round trip time. Uh, and it's also called early data. Uh, and the extension is, uh, is called early data as well. And this feature uh, was requested by, by all the big players, Google, Facebook, uh, Cloudflare, all these companies that really care about speed and really want to to milk um, every uh, milliseconds of time uh, they can they can get from a TLS key exchange. Um, and with this zero RTT thing, they can send application data here in your very, very, very first flight of messages. And that's why they call that zero RTTs because you haven't done uh, a round trip yet and, and yet you send encrypted uh, content. So you might have guessed uh, the only way to do that is to do a PSK key exchange because if you don't have a PSK, 
uh, then you don't really share anything with the server and you cannot have a key at this moment in time, at this point in time, and so it, you cannot encrypt this data. Uh, so you need to do a PSK, and in addition, you need to include this early data extension to tell the server that you're going to send some application data, and as you can see, encrypted with a different key, uh, because I, I used a different image, but you also have different parent, uh, uh, you have parentheses here instead of curly brackets or, or square brackets. Uh, and this data uh, will be decrypted by the server if the server accepts it via an early data extension as well. Uh, if the server does not accept the application, this uh, early data, so it doesn't include the early data here, then we have a problem. And the problem is that the client doesn't really know this until it reads the encrypted extension message. And at this point in time, it's already sending application data that is encrypted. And so the server could say, okay, it's fine. I'll skip this application data. The problem is that it's encrypted. And the next handshake message that the server is expecting from the client, which is a, um, a finished message here, is also encrypted. So we have something very peculiar and that's something that only happens in TLS 1.3 actually called trial decryption. And the server, it means that the server is forced to try to decrypt messages that it received to see if it's a normal application data or the finished message that it's waiting for. If it's application data, it skips it, right? We're in the case where we are not using early data from the server, uh, just because we don't recognize the PSK or maybe because we, um, we don't want to accept early data. And if we decrypt the message and it's a finish, then we know we can uh, finish the handshake and, and we can go. At this point in time, the client can choose to resend, to retry sending this application data in the channel uh, it created uh, here with the, the normal um, uh, application traffic keys. Or it can choose not to retransmit this, uh, this data, which is also uh, possible uh, pretty much it's, it's uh, the, the choice of the application. There are reasons for that. I'm not gonna explain that here, but pretty much um, you need to understand that application data that you send here, um, you, you're sending it maybe because you know you're sending it as your round trip uh, time data or early data. And if the server rejects that, there are possible scenarios where you don't want to retransmit it. Uh, you can read more about that in this section and in some appendix. All right, so as a client, what do you do after you're done sending your application data? Well, if the server indeed parses your application data and accepts it, you will need to send a handshake message called end of early data to advertise to the server that you're done sending this early data and that you will then next send a finished message. And this is uh, another uh, handshake message and I believe we've seen all but one handshake messages in all of this diagram. The last one being the key update post handshake message, which pretty much uh, updates the, the keys that the client and the server use. But I'm not going to talk about that here because it is not mentioned in any of these diagrams and we'll see about that in the handshake section. Note that uh, you'll see we have some important note here zero RTT data, so the data that we send here is replayable and not forward secret. So it is very important that this data here is not uh, something that if replayed would break your application. So it is kind of, of weird that we have that in TLS 1.3, uh, it's possible that most implementations will not support early data because of these security implications. Some people have noted that get requests, uh, HTTP requests that, that use the get verb should not uh, mutate the states on the server side and should be fine to be replayed. If you know a bit about security and the web, you know that it's not always true. Uh, so we'll see how browsers implement that. Uh, but uh, you need to be aware of this pitfall of this uh, new feature of TLS 1.3. And this is really where you can uh, shoot yourself in the foot uh, by setting up TLS and, and kind of using this uh, 
early data for for any data and, and let passive observers observe that data and replay it and maybe break your application so so really be careful with this uh, this new feature all right and this is pretty much uh, everything about this section i encourage you to actually read everything here uh, because i have skipped a lot of a lot of details and uh, once you're done with that uh, i encourage you to look at the next video uh, in presentation language